So after a lot of back and forth, I ended up picking up the Q3, and honestly, this is the best decision that I've made this year. So this is the long awaited video. I know a ton of people have been asking about my Q3, why I upgraded. So although I planned to stick with the Q2 as my main photo camera for 2024, I knew that the next logical step was to go up to the Q3. So I figured I'd put my name down at my local camera store um, and just be on the list because I knew that the wait time was gonna be really long. And then just coincidentally, I happened to stumble across a few, couple months later, uh, an ad on my local classifieds here in Salt Lake of someone selling a brand new unopened Q3 pretty much for retail. They weren't trying to upsell it or flip it for a profit or anything. So then I kind of had a decision to make. I, I was feeling that if I didn't jump on this because it was an investment in my business and it's something I wanted to do, just was expecting it to be around September probably of when one would become available. I knew that if, it, if I didn't jump on it, I would probably kick myself and be regretting it. The Q3 has just taken the Q2 obviously just up to the next level. And I know that sounds stupid because it is the next camera. It's the replacement for the Q2. But as this is my main photo camera, I don't actually currently own a photo camera that's, you know, mirrorless interchangeable lenses. This is my only photo camera aside from the X106 that I've been using and will probably be getting rid of soon. I figured that it was just a smart business decision to just move up as I had that opportunity. And let me tell you, the Q3 has just been absolutely incredible. It's so hard to put into words. And I just hope that you kind of get the emotion that I'm, I'm feeling. But every time I pick up the Q3 and use it to make photos, oh my goodness, I just, I feel like I'm so locked in and just, it, they slow me down. Obviously the Q3 is faster than the Q2, but it slows me down still because it's not an A7 R5 or whatever, or an A7 IV. It's not got the fastest processor or the fastest autofocus. And it just makes me think. So it, it, it's everything that the Q2 was, but better. It's got updated processors, so it's a little bit quicker. It doesn't hang up as much as the Q2 would when I'm cycling through my photos or going through the menus. The autofocus is actually really good for what it is. Um, and the image quality is just absolutely phenomenal. So just a quick summary on specifications and improvements over the Q2. It has the next gen processor that I believe is the same as the M11 and it has a 60 megapixel sensor. So more resolution than the Q2. And by going up to 60 megapixels, I've got that extra bump in 13 megapixels of resolution. And because this is my only photo camera, I just have even more versatility now for my business and my personal work. Being that 28 mil fixed lens can now effectively be like a pseudo 90 millimeters if I really wanna push that sensor to its limits. And I have, and they have yielded fantastic results. Many times I've used a 90 millimeter crop on the Q3 and it has just performed outstandingly and clients have been happy with those results and they don't know, they don't care, frankly, that I've cropped in a crap ton on this lens, but it just gives me all of that versatility in a tiny portable package. Video capabilities have vastly improved over the Q2. It now has L-Log, so there's that flexibility in post with color grading, and it can film in 8K up to 29 frames per second. Played around with this a little bit, and it's actually surprisingly really good. But I don't personally use the Q3 really for any video, but it's just nice to have that option there if I need to have something secondary to my FX3. But I think one of the biggest things that I've noticed in an improvement with the Q3 of the Q2 is the low light performance. The grain is very pleasing, very well managed, and it just kind of adds to the photo. I actually add grain in post anyway, so any photos that are showing up on the screen, I have added some grain in post. I kind of like that look. It takes off that kind of digital edge sometimes, but I just, I like it as a stylistic look and I've kind of been running with it lately. But the natural grain that this camera produces at high ISO, I love it. It just blends really nicely with the photographs. And also the Q3 can actually now do pretty reasonably well astrophotography. 
the Q2 had some sort of baked in, one, it had baked in noise reduction, but two, it also had a limiting factor when you were shooting in bulb mode. There was something going on, I couldn't remember exactly, but it wouldn't let you go above like eight seconds if you had a high ISO. It was very weird, didn't make any sense, but it was literally locking your settings. Even in manual, you couldn't override it. But what I have used the Q3 for is the Aurora in Iceland. And this photo right here actually got handheld at, I believe it was half a second from the window of a plane. And another thing to note is that the lens stabilization has improved on the Q3 over the Q2 as well. And that's definitely noticeable, particularly shutter speeds under like 1 30th of a second. But I'm pretty steady with my hands. Like I can comfortably, I mean, obviously I shot handheld from a plane at half a second, but obviously that OIS is helping me there. But I can generally shoot at like 1 30th, but that improved OIS just gives me a little bit more peace of mind with my stills. And obviously it kind of helps for video, but it's not as good as IBIS. So I don't really rely on OIS for video. If I am making videos with the Q3, it's just kind of like some B-roll to kind of assist with my FX3. For the most part, it'll be on a tripod and there's no movement really involved. Obviously I was blown away by the image quality of the Q2 and the Q3 has just taken it to another level. The dynamic range is just absolutely phenomenal. And that Sumalux glass, the same goes for the Q2. It's just mind-blowingly good. Like, and I combine it. So I have a video on this if you're interested, but I use the um, Polar Pro Everyday Mist Polarizer Filter. And this is actually in 67 millimeters with a 67 mil step-up ring. I feel it just kind of fits the form factor of the Q3 a lot nicer and the Q2. Um, but this filter with the polarization and the black mist built in one, with an f1.7 aperture and just the absolute beauty of this Sumalux piece of glass creates some of the best 3D rendering I have ever seen in a camera. This, this has literally taken my business and my just artwork to the next level. And I know it sounds crazy, but unless you try one, Q2 or Q3, then you're not gonna understand. Get your hands on one, go make some photos with it. And I'm telling you right now, if you don't like it, then there's something wrong with you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Everyone has their own taste, but honestly, you just gotta experience it to truly understand what I'm talking about. So a couple of other changes, obviously we'll, we'll talk about build for a little bit. Um, if this actually focuses, so they've moved the, all of the buttons to the right hand side now, which is really nice because when you're holding the camera, you can just access them all uh, on the Q, a couple were over here, which was a little bit annoying. Um, and the Q3, it's no longer flush with the screen anymore. That's one thing that I really liked about the Q2 but obviously it's not flush because the Q3 now has a um, flip screen, not flip screen, but you know what I'm saying? Like it, you can kind of waist level shoot, but it bugs me because it doesn't actually go to like a true 90 degrees. Now, I think it doesn't because they wanted it to be as robust as possible. This is the most sturdy, well-built flip screen that I've ever seen on a camera. It's just really sturdy. Like, listen to this. It just sounds sturdy as well. Like, it's built really well, but because of this, it does protrude. And I have, unfortunately, um, if this focuses right here, right there, I've nicked it, which is a little bit annoying, but it's my workhorse camera, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna baby it too much. Um, but other than that, the bottom is pretty much the same as the Q2. We have the really nicely designed battery, our memory card slot. But we also have this now because you can get the base plate for wireless charging, which I don't use. But one of the biggest things that I love, obviously aside from the image quality and the upgraded processor and autofocus, is the USB-C port on the side, which now allows for USB-C charging. And 
I should get another battery, but I only own one battery. And this is a testament to one, the battery life, and two, how quick and efficient that USB-C charging is. But I took this shortly after I bought it, I took it to Iceland in January and I was there for two weeks. And I never ran out of battery because one, the battery is great, but two, I had some portable battery banks with me and obviously the van we were in had power. Whenever I needed power, I'd just plug in my USB-C and it literally took no time to charge back up to full. So really, really crucial and beneficial for charging on the go. Obviously I should get another battery, but that's been a lifesaver. The ability to just plug it in and not have to worry about finding an outlet or something. There's even been instances where I've plugged it into my laptop to get some extra power as well. And it's just been very clutch and a moment's notice to charge this up. So all in all, the Q3 is 100% worth it, in my opinion. Now, obviously, my opinion comes from the fact that I'm a full-time photographer and, and videographer. So this is my workhorse camera, but it also doubles up as a fun camera. Like, I love using it. I love making photos, whether it's for work or for pleasure because of the Q3, I think it's just absolutely fantastic. But you can't go wrong with the Q2. The Q2 is also incredible and I miss it. There was some character to it and I loved how that screen was just flush and you know, it was just a real nice robust camera. But the Q3 was the next logical step for me. But so if you're considering one of these two, I think it just comes down to budget, obviously. You cannot go wrong with either of them. Half of the last, I don't know, 200 photos on my Instagram were with the Q2. So definitely check those out. I try and include what camera I'm using in the description of the photo. But uh, I definitely think the Q3 is worth the money in my opinion. So if you have that opportunity or you're thinking about it, just go for it because you won't regret it. I hope this video has been helpful and answered some questions that you may have about the Q3. If it's something I haven't covered, then just reach out to me, whether it's by DM or in the comments, and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks so much for tuning in and until next time, I'll see you later.